Hello everybody, Arlington Matrix here. Today we're going to be looking at how to stream multiple audio tracks in OBS. I have a previous video up detailing how to record multiple audio tracks. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to send that information to a server. A quick word of warning though. As of this recording date, neither Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, or any of the big streaming platforms support multiple audio tracks and will only allow you to stream a single audio track to their servers. This is a limitation in the RTMP protocol. The use case for the information in this video would be if you want to set up a restreaming server. In this video, we'll be showing you the simple restreaming server setup using FFmpeg. When we open up OBS, we're going to enter the settings and go to output. Note that the streaming tab only allows you to select a single audio track. Thus, with the streaming tab, we can only broadcast a single audio track. We're going to go over here to the recording tab, and from the drop down, we'll be selecting custom FFmpeg. Now, as I understand it, the current version of OBS should have FFmpeg bundled with the software. If it doesn't, then you can download it from a link in the video description. From here, it's just a matter of setting up the settings. We'll select the output to be URL, and we'll enter the URL with the protocol. In this case, the protocol is SRT, which stands for Secure Reliable Transport. And we'll be entering the IP address of the server that's going to be listening for that stream. In this case, it is a local IP address because that's where my server is located on the local network. Now this configuration is a little bit advanced because you have to know what you're doing. Here I have FLV selected as my output format with H.264 and NVENC as my video format and I have three audio tracks. Now this is a problem. This will give you an error if you try to stream with these settings. The reason being that FLV only supports one audio track. Now personally I prefer to use the Matroska file format. This allows you to pack just about anything you could ever want into a video stream, including multiple audio tracks. So after selecting Matroska and selecting the tracks that I want to stream, I can now stream to my SRT server. But I do not have an SRT server set up yet. Setting it up is actually a very simple task. This is just a matter of uh, personal preference for setting up the server, but what I have is an Arch Linux computer separate from my main computer, and I just have FFmpeg installed. If I want to receive SRT on that computer, then uh, I can just run FFmpeg with the following options. On our server, we are running FFmpeg. The first option is dash I, which is our input. We are selecting the SRT protocol and reading from 10.11.0.7. This is run on the server and that IP address is for the server's own IP address. We are selecting port 10,000 and we are selecting mode equals listener, which means that the server will be listening for anything on port 10,000 at the IP address 10.11.0.7. The IP address for the server. We are selecting option dash F T, which means format T. This tells FFmpeg that we are going to have multiple outputs. We are selecting dash map zero. This means we are accepting all of the inputs from the input stream. The next line is our codec video, C colon V. You can select whatever video codec you feel is necessary for this, provided that it is supported by the RTMP servers on whatever site that you choose to stream on. This is simply an example uh, in which we are uploading at 6,000 kilobits per second and using the CPU X264 encoder. The next line is the audio codec. Again, you can set this to whatever is relevant for your individual use. In this case, I am simply copying what is being sent from my streaming computer. The next line allows you to select a buffer size. Uh, anything that's going to be online, it's useful to have some kind of buffer just in case there's uh, network interruption. It's unnecessary, however, and you don't need to include this line if you do not want to. And the next line, which is really long, includes our output. So since we're using the T format, we can select multiple outputs here. 
The first output is the locally saved copy in which we are saving all of the information from the lines above. The second line is streaming to some Twitch RTMP server in which we are using the FLV file format and selecting audio channel zero as well as the main video channel. We also have an output to some YouTube RTMP server in which we are selecting audio channel zero as well as the main video channel. Altogether, this full command takes the input from 10.11.0.7. Again, that is the server IP address on which we are running this command. It opens a port on port 10,000 and starts listening for any SRT traffic on port 10,000. It then does a video compression and maps the output to a Matroska file on the local hard drive, as well as a couple of RTMP servers for which we are streaming a single audio track with the FLV file format. This command sets up an FFmpeg instance which is listening for an SRT video stream. Once it starts receiving information it starts saving to the disk and at the same time it starts streaming to a remote streaming service. In this case I've tried setting it up such as a, a Twitch RTMP server. The locally saved file will of course include all of the audio tracks and the streaming service will only receive the selected audio track. As a result, if you need to adjust the audio levels after you've completed a, a live stream, then you have a locally saved file with all the audio tracks nicely separated out. As a tip though, I would generally recommend that you have the SRT service started before you start the OBS stream, otherwise it's likely to give you an error in OBS, because there won't be anything on the other end to receive the SRT stream. Also, instead of clicking stop recording on OBS to stop the stream, I would recommend instead closing the FFmpeg instance on the server. If you cut the video going to the server, then the file won't be properly terminated and you'll have FFmpeg kind of stuck there waiting for the stream to continue, but there's nothing left on that uh, secure connection for it to receive. And so as a result, the file isn't properly terminated. As always, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe and like, but don't feel obligated to do so. I'm Arlington Matrix, and have a great day.